My favorite discussion, my first year on the board, she was talking about things that we did, was whether long, heated discussion whether we should serve chocolate milk on Fridays <laughs> and Mondays or just Fridays. <laughs> and it was contentious. And that was not what we should have been spending our, and that's likely we were fighting with teachers and we were talking about chocolate milk. There was nothing. That's why we were the lowest performing class A school district in the state. So, but with that, um, these are the websites. A whole host of information can be found at our website. I'm not going to take the time to walk through. You guys are completely intuitive on the internet. But, and do, would you, you probably have some things that will be very relevant to that. Should well, I, click I, I think I have. Yeah, no, this is we a PDF. Both so. missed the walkthrough of the slide. So <laughs> I, this is, sure I think we're done. What we, so this is it. Have, okay, okay, perfect. So, um, how do we want to do this? And it's a P, it's a PDF, so it's not a live link. So it can't oh, click it. Oh, okay. actually, if you you know what though, I'm all logged in. I've taken so because I do think it's really important, in my opinion, for them to kind of understand where their information is on your site. It's okay. Okay, so on this page. Okay, yeah, so um, this is just our homepage, um, ndsba.org. I'm hoping it'll look a little different than this in 12 months. It is not the most user friendly site. We are, Taylor and I are awaiting a quote to get the whole thing kind of redesigned. So if you like this, don't get too used to it because <laughs> hopefully it's going to be different somewhat soon. Um, but the bulk of what you probably will go to it looking for um, are going to be under three tabs. The first one would be our events tab. Um, that is going to cover kind of all of our convenings. Um, the first one, annual convention, is our biggest event of the year. Um, and I think there is no. So under annual convention is where if you are in one of those new board members, um, we host our new board member seminar that law requires you attend within the first year of service. Um, so that happens the Thursday during our annual convention. Um, so right now we don't have our agenda up there yet because Taylor is anxiously awaiting that I finalize that. Um, I think my deadline to do that is Thursday, so she is probably back there um, waiting for me to do that. Once I do that, um, all that information will be on that page. Um, you'll be able to see all of the sessions that we have scheduled, and I really... October 26th is the new, and October 27th is the full. Correct. October 26th is new member seminar and our school law seminar. So if you are a veteran board member and you've been to new member seminar, but you want to come do school law seminar on Thursday and then convention on Friday the 27th, and I really, really encourage you to attend those. A, I think we put on kind of some great sessions, but B, you really, really, really learn a lot just by spending those two days with your fellow board members. Um, and to Kirsten's point with Be Legendary about having a chance for your whole board to work and learn together, um, our convention is an exception to your open meetings law, and so you have the ability to come and sit and learn if you bring your full board you, I mean, not saying don't do business. It's not that kind of exception, <laughs> right? Like you can't sit at my conve convention and vote, but you can sit together and learn and discuss and um, do all of those types of things. And so it's a great opportunity to do professional development again with your board. Um, and then we do a negotiation seminar in February where we focus really on those um, personnel issues and um, negotiating. Of course, you see the boot camp. Um, and then brunch and learns. These are one of my favorite things that um, I think don't get enough attention, but I think are probably one of my favorite resources. We do a free webinar the third Wednesday of every month. They're recorded, so even if you can't do 9 a.m., they're on our YouTube channel. Um, we do all sorts of different topics. You can come and watch them later if 9 o'clock doesn't work for you. I am always desperately looking for new ideas on new topics. So if there's something you really want to learn about, call me. I'd be happy to track down somebody to talk about it. Um, but odds are if you have a question about 
something related to being a school board member. We have probably done a brunch and learn on it at some point in time. Um, so I probably have a video I can send you to um, to help kind of give you an in-depth answer. So that's kind of the quick and dirty on our events. Um, then our resources tab, which is the one, yeah, click resources. Don't oh, just okay. click brunch and learn. That will take you to the videos. But if you hit resources, this is probably the driving page between behind Taylor and I's desire to rework this web page. Um, you can see there's some links to some great things there, but we have so much more than this, and it's just, I don't think it's organized in a way that helps you find what you're looking for. Um, and I really want it to be easy for you to go, I have a question about X, and here's, you're gonna find what you need. But I would direct <coughs> you probably to this sort of uh, specific group of links. Um, the very first link, Kirsten, if you go up a little <coughs> bit, um, this school board member okay. toolkit. That is what I call my school board member Bible. Um, it is 32, 33 pages and is just kind of that school board member 101. Um, it does not get into depth, the depths of, you know, goal setting and student outcomes and, and those types of things, but the very bare bones that you need to show up on day one and kind of not break the law, <laughs> as I say, right? Um, so we give the copy of that to you in October, but if you want to get it today, it is there available for free virtually. Um, and then just kind of a whole slew of things, some things about knowing your business manager, sample job description, evaluating your superintendent, which we think is super important. Um, and then this is something that I'm trying to do a much better job of telling everybody about every opportunity <coughs> I get. Um, we really like to recognize great board members. Um, I think the public doesn't always love public school in 2023, and I get to know all the school board members around the state, and I think you guys are pretty fantastic, and so I love to tell the world about all of the hard work and service that you do. And so one of the ways that we get to do that is by recognizing you for the time and service that you put into your community. And so if you want to take a look at those later, um, we honor board members at two levels. <coughs> Um, maybe someday three. We call you master and veteran board members and we just kind of have a point system for attending things like this, for attending the B Legendary School Board Institute. All the different things earn you points and once you hit a certain level of points, um, we give you a nice plaque and I send a press release to your local newspaper telling them how cool you are um, and, and things like that. And um, Maybe that sounds silly, but cool. I think that's really fantastic. You know, we honor our teachers, we honor our superintendents when they do things like that. I think it's really important that your community knows all of the work that goes into being a great board member um, and that you're not just showing up for the free pizza at 6 p.m. the second Tuesday of the week, right? <laughs> no free pizza, yeah, okay, all right. Um, so that's kind of the bulk of the resources there. There are other tabs on our webpage that talks about some guidance, and during legislative session, um, you'll, you'll get some clicks there. There'll be a couple other things, but um, I think that's the bulk of it for, for the most part. You'll find you know, our, quick, our quick clicks is a little, little, <laughs> a little big today. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you ever have a superintendent opening, we post those there, kind of our timeliest stuff. Our monthly bulletin, um, you will be automatically subscribed to that once you become a member. If you've been around for a while, you're already getting that in the mail. If you're new, you should start getting that in the mail this month or next. Um, otherwise, our contact information is all there, um, as well as photos of my staff, so when you call and you talk to somebody, if you'd like to see the face of who you're talking to, um, you can look that up there too. And, um, like I said, always happy to take your phone call, and if you can't find something on this webpage, please call us. We'll help you, help you find it, or we'll just send you directly to it, because we really do have a lot more than, than what's available there, and we're happy to help you track something down. And this is just ours. It's uh, nd.gov slash forward slash DPI forward slash so super super simple data you can find all sorts of information under stars um, school districts all of the ESSA course codes our educational standards finance and operations um, credentials and certificates professional development 
programs. These are all of the programs. These are all the offices within our agency, academic support, early childhood, Indian education, literacy, science of reading, all the things that have to do with school and doing school. Policy and guidelines. This is a, dep a site visited frequently by your superintendents in addition to their own association, NDCEL and ESBA websites about civil rights, executive orders. Families and communities, really talking about resources for families, resources for you um, as, as school board members and for students and just some programs that the department is um, working with and ways that we are trying to improve, uh, do our part to improve student outcomes. And then of course, partners is our links page. So um, I will, oh, yeah, this is. Did Stan show them the insights page during his presentation? don't believe this is really helpful. Um, we talked about it, but I don't think Digital, didn't show it. Oh, it's ND Insights, sorry. It used to be Insights. Is it? Okay. Our home page. So under data? No. This is our front page. What's our front page? Okay. I'll back up so you guys so you guys can get there. See when you bookmark everything. <laughs> okay. So this will be four tiles. Oh, I understand. And then where it says dashboard? Yep. Okay. So it's on our home page. It's this fourth one, dashboard insights. And then this is just a fabulous wealth of information. I'll do Mandan again, just because you can look for statewide data. And this is where we learn academic progress, um, student achievement. And everybody has access to this or just board members? Nope, everybody. Yeah, everybody. So this is where you see um, for all grades for English language, 45% of our students overall, K through 12, are proficient. And then you can say, what's our third grade? What's our fifth grade? But most helpful for you as board members is instead of doing statewide data, you can let me switch, select data for a specific school or district. So I can go in here and I can say Mandan public and underneath Mandan I'll be able to see how our, our district is doing overall and I'll just click on there it'll give me some basic information on there are 11 schools in this district and we have a student enrollment of 4,336 Mike Fitz is the superintendent Ryan Legacy <coughs> is our business manager Sheldon Wolf is our board president under academic progress, I'll see how student achievement is doing. I want to see how Mandan overall is doing for third grade reading in this most recent year that is publicly available. I told you that the test results would become publicly available in September. This is where they're publicly available. So this result is the, for the test that was taken in the spring of, in April of 2022. September will have April of 2023 up there. So you will see that Mandan, 39% of its third graders. If I wanted to back out and do academic, if I wanted to say, how is my, how are my, my boys' school, um, Fort Lincoln Elementary? Like, how are they specifically doing in third grade reading? That was what I showed you. Um, before was all elementary school third graders. So third grade for Fort Lincoln Elementary, 39%. So pretty That's standard. The state. Is that the, are they compared to the state here than the district school? Nope, this is, oh shoot, thank you. Yeah. No, you're right, the state is 39. <gasps> thank you. So the district is 20, so actually the district, Mandan's district is below the state average. Sorry, I should look at my <laughs> state, district, and school. Um, so we are below 
the state average. Only 35% of our students in Mandan can read at third grade. And then um, for Fort Lincoln, since some demographics might be identifiable, um, we're right between 35 and 43% for that school. So, and then math, how are we doing for math achievement? The state is 38%, excuse me, 48% for third grade math. The district is at 30, 46%, and the school is actually higher than the state average. So that's, you can look up your school's information. Anybody in your community can look up your school's information. Anybody on the internet. Anybody on the internet. Only one school at a time. Yes, and so you can't graph like the three schools around you. To Funny that you ask that because that's what we're working on next. Our our, our so next iteration. Next like the four schools around you. Okay, we're yep. here. I mean, you can still. You're a parent you can, looking to move to North Dakota and trying to choose well, a school know. district. Just even as a school board member, just yeah. to say. Okay, Who's doing what? what yeah. Ellendale's doing this. Yeah. We should really talk to Ellendale yeah. to get this, or Edgeley's doing this. Like, and that's what's driving our desire to do that. It's so, you know, um, Lindsay mentioned well, you can do Underwood, still, Turtle Lake, like Washburn. Park. What are they doing? Yeah. What can yeah. they share? We have the data. The, I mean, I say this yes. as somebody who struggles running an iPhone sometimes, but the coding shouldn't be that hard to I know. pull them up, yeah. right? Yeah, it's that is actually, we have some people come in our state this week okay. helping us talk about that, just doing some comparisons. So. I truly just want to um, end, I think, just with just deep, deep gratefulness and thanks to all of you for not only the work that you do, you will never go to a basketball game and be able to watch the entire game again. <laughs> and you'll never be able to make a quick stop in the grocery store just to get a gallon of milk. Um, somebody will always have something they want to share with you to celebrate, a concern that they have, or a problem that they want you to fix. And as you move through and the association helps you, you know, navigate how you answer each of those different situations and how you respond, um, but know that it's a blessing. You have the opportunity to change the trajectory of lives. Um, and that's a real thing, up close and tangible. For whatever reason you ran for the board, for whatever reason you you happen to be on the board or however you got there, um, just know that this is a tremendous opportunity and a blessing. I started by saying it's, it's a job I miss every day. I was able to help 4,000 students um, each year and now you know I'm here and it's, it's, it's multiplied, but it was the best job that I ever had because you could just see real tangible results. Um, you know, uh, Superintendent Trottier asked me about what are the higher ed programs doing? Um, there's lots of problems out there. There's lots of ways that we can improve. But as I was thinking about that question, the genesis starts with me, and I'm a huge um, uh, embracer of the serenity prayer of recognize you know, what you can change, accept the things that you can't change, and have the wisdom to know the difference. And so there are some things that I can't change about higher ed doctoral or superintendent programs, but there are some things that I can change right here, right now. All of you have that power too. So I appreciate it, Alexis. Yeah, I would just echo Superintendent Basler's gratitude for all of you for the work that you do, for being here today. Um, and then just a reminder to you that the School Boards Association is your association. We exist to serve you. Um, my staff and I are available um, Monday through Friday, sometimes outside of Monday through Friday, depending on how bad it is, what the situation is, right, um, to help when you need it. And, um, you know, sometimes that means answering specific questions. Um, sometimes that means talking through a situation. Sometimes that means simply, you know, reminding you that you're not the only one in this situation, right? I, often joke with Kirsten that I feel a little bit like a family counselor at times and um, that includes just kind of being a, a ear to listen to your frustrations at, at times. I think while the job can be very rewarding, 
um, it doesn't come without its challenges. And so um, know that that is what we are here to do. We, if your job is to serve students, our job is to serve you the, so that you can serve students. So um, please let us know anytime that we can help you in your service. So with that. Thanks much. We will email you out. Yes. yes. I was just wondering, what is the YouTube channel you mentioned that I think the previous brunch and lunch? Yeah, so um, if just go to ndsba.org and you'll get linked there. I couldn't tell you what the weird YouTube link is, but it's just the North Dakota School Boards Association YouTube channel. And it's under resources? Yeah. And yeah. then brunch, uh, yeah. the drop down under resources is brunch and learn. And I think if you click that, yeah. Yeah. all right. Okay. Thank you so Can much. You Please be in touch. On the be legendary leadership at the convention. Yes, there will be a breakout session there. Uh, but I think are the applications due before the October? When are the applications well, due? Will be from July sixth to September fifteenth. So we'll go out um, and those will be just extra funds that they're okay. Right, the deadline is the priority. September 15th. Okay. Tina, was there an article in our July bulletin? Yes, there was. Okay, so if you go to our website, um, our bulletin is available, um, our newsletter, and there's an article that links to the application for the grants um, in that in the July issue of the bulletin. And if you search it on DPI website, um, it's on our website. Yeah, if you stumble into one of our websites, yeah, you, that's you, great. You should be able to get it. Just 